Now uh, we move on to the next topic which is the next type of transmitters which are laser diodes. So before we move on to laser diodes, I would like you to list out the limitations of LEDs. Why do we want to move to another laser source? If LEDs are very nice, compact, uh, quite inexpensive, you can modulate them directly. Why do you need to move to laser diodes? So can you list out some of the limitations that you see from LEDs? One is large spectral width. Why do you think large spectral width is a problem? So this is limitations of <coughs> LEDs as sources of sources for optical communication. So what is the problem if you have spectral width? What is the spectral width of an LED? What is the spectral width of an LED? We said irrespective of the emission wavelength, the spectral width is 11 terahertz. That is what you expect out of an LED. Why is that 11 terahertz, which is several nanometers? Why is that 11 terahertz bad? It may, the different colors when propagating through a fiber or through any medium may travel with different speeds and that leads to chromatic dispersion. So you will send all the colors simultaneously. Your information goes, when you are sending an information from the transmitter to the receiver, all the colors are starting together, but at the end all the colors appear at different times. So your information will get spread out in time. So one issue with the large spectral width is chromatic dispersion. So if you want to transmit uh, long distances, very long distances, uh, we will learn how later how to calculate chromatic dispersion and what is the uh, exact spread in terms of uh, time, time spread, we will do that. But for us, for now, let us understand that if you have different colors, they will take different times to propagate through the fiber and because of which the arrival time of all the colors will be different. And when the arrival time is different, it means that as if your information is spread out. Uh, what else is a problem? What is the modulation bandwidth that you calculated? 5.5 megahertz. Those are some typical numbers actually. Of course, by design you may change that 50 nanosecond to maybe 10 nanosecond, maybe 2 nanosecond, but it is not going to change by several orders of magnitude, which means the modulation bandwidth is limited because of your carrier lifetime. If you were, why were you using optical communication in the first place? Your carrier frequency was terahertz, so you can potentially modulate at even up to several gigahertz or terahertz up to even 100 gigahertz or so on. But if your device is limiting that, then there is no use of, if the modulation bandwidth of the device is only megahertz, then there is no use of, there is no benefit of using the terahertz carrier frequency. If you were to use terahertz carrier frequency, you should be able to modulate it at high bandwidth and that is not becoming possible because of the tau c, right. So the second limitation is the limited modulation bandwidth and that is fundamentally limited by your tau c. And that is something that you do not want to have in a high speed communication system. And of course, there is an issue, the efficiency is poor, but that is a fundamental limitation because of the high refractive index and low refractive index. So we do not know whether uh, laser diodes 
can solve that problem of poor efficiency. But even with poor efficiency, your modulation bandwidth is also limited, your spectral width is also very large. So, if you were to have a communication system which will work at gigabits per second, bandwidths of several gigahertz if you want, LED is not the way to go. You have to move to something else. Then why did we learn about LEDs? If that's not going to be useful. No, we never said that's not going to be useful. It will definitely be useful for those applications which require only megahertz or several megahertz of bandwidth. So, for short distance links where chromatic dispersion is not a problem, where the data rates are several megabits per second, you can still use LEDs because they will turn out to be even more cheaper than a laser diodes. So, as I said earlier, it is always a cost and uh, performance trade off, right. So, if you want only some, some few megabits per second transmission, you would obviously go ahead and make use of an LED, okay. Now, laser diodes, first of all, corresponding to this property have a smaller spectral width. So, we should see how to control the spectral width of the laser diode. It has fundamentally larger modulation bandwidth capability. So, we need to see how we are overcoming this limitation of this recombination time in a laser diode. Okay. Efficiency we may not be able to do much because that is more to do with uh, Fresnel reflection and Fresnel reflection we know that because the index is large you know there is only a certain amount of uh, light that can come out of the system. So, we may not be able to do much about uh, improving the efficiency, but we will still work out what is the efficiency of the laser diode and we can compare it with the LED. Okay. So, we need to understand why a laser diode can have a smaller spectral width and also why it can give a larger modulation width. Okay. And you can guess what is the process involved in, what is the difference in the process involved in LED emission and a laser diode emission. One was spontaneous emission, the other one is stimulated emission. So, fundamentally we understand that spontaneous emission has a certain recombination time there is a rate at which spontaneous emission can happen. How are you increasing that time? You want to sorry, how are you decreasing that time? You want to decrease that time. You want the electron holes to recombine much faster and how are you enabling that? You are injecting photons in the system, right. So, in a stimulated emission, you have the conduction band which is filled with uh, electrons and valence band which has vacancies. Instead of allowing the electron hole recombination to happen on its own spontaneously, what you are doing is you are sending photons into the system and you are stimulating the process. So, the electron hole combinations are happening much faster rate and that rate is now decided by not by the tau c now, it is going to now get decided by the photon, it has to do with the number of photons that is going into the system. So, the recombination rate is now decided by the number of photons that is stimulating. So, there is something called as a stimulated lifetime which is different from a spontaneous lifetime and that stimulated lifetime obviously is going to be very, very, very small when compared to spontaneous lifetime and that is how you are making your laser diode work much faster. That is a fundamental difference. The exact math of it we will do tomorrow.